I'm Steven. That's John. We're from Just Got Played, and we're bringing you Mr. X's top 25 games of all time. So what does that mean? Um, you can go back and watch the very first video to get a little more information about it. But essentially, I asked a whole bunch of people for their top 50 games of all time. I used an algorithm to uh, collect all that into this aggregated top 25 games of all time. So we're counting that down. And today we have number four on this list, which is a staple on this list. Uh, been there since the beginning, seven years ago, uh, which is Keyflower. So Keyflower was on the original list in 2016 at number two. Uh, in 2017, it was number eight. In 2018, it was an honorable mention. Um, and mostly that's my fault, uh, because if I uh, hadn't stubbornly selected Key to the City London uh, as a different game that year, it would have made it into the top 25. But uh, then in 2019, it was back to number three, 2020, number six, 2021, number 11. And here we are again, back in the top five at number four. So Keyflower, there's a whole series of games called the Key series of games. Um, and in fact, the first one, maybe Keywood, one of the key games is often cited as the first worker placement game. Um, but uh, Keyflower is the most popular uh, of all the Key series games. And the reason uh, I like Keyflower is the interesting mechanisms it has in play at the same time. So I mentioned worker placement. Um, you have uh, these meeples, and the meeples are different colors. You know, they're blue, red, yellow, uh, and then there's special green ones. And it's interesting because on your turn, you decide, what do I want to do? I can activate one of the tiles that are out there, either in my own village, in somebody else's village, or one of the villages that is on offer um, as an auction. So I can activate one of those tiles. Um, it's always better to activate stuff that's in your current village because at the end of that turn, you're gonna collect the meeples that are in your village and use those in the next round. So if you use somebody else's tile, fine, you get to use their tile, but then they're gonna get those meeples. Um, but the other thing you can do is you can bid on those tiles that are on offer. So it's interesting. People can use those even though they're not in any village. Uh, and so whoever wins those will get to put them in their village and get the meeples off of them. Uh, but also uh, the auction is simultaneously going on with it. And so why does it matter? Like, well, you could just use stuff, auction stuff. What does it matter in the order that you're doing it in? Well, part of the reason is because as soon as somebody establishes the specific color of meeple that is being used on that tile, then that's all that can be used on it. So if I reach out and put one yellow meeple on that tile, even just as a worker now, and it's being auctioned off, now everybody else has to only auction with yellow meeples to try to get that tile, whoever spends the most yellow meeples to get that tile. Um, and that's interesting because, you know, it's a bidding mechanism. So you can put two or three out there. If somebody outbids you, you can move your meeple somewhere else. Um, but as far as the worker placement goes, when you activate a space, you could put, say, just one meeple down. Like, I'm going to put a green meeple down, and the green meeples are special, they're rarer. You have to get them through generating or something, and now maybe nobody else can use or bid on that tile because they really don't have green meeples. Or maybe I put one blue meeple down. You aren't blocked from using that tile. You can come along and use it, but you have to use two blue meeples. And then the next person has to use three, and I think three might be the limit. But, you know, you might be looking at the board and just like, well, I want to activate that tile, and I've got three blue meeples and I don't really have anything else to do with those meeples. So I'm just going to go and put all three on that tile. And now you've blocked anybody else from ever using it, right? Or you could put two out instead of one, just because if somebody else wants to use it, now they have to put three out, you know, instead of two, if you just put one. So there's a weird stuff like that going on. But yeah, it's very tense on your turn. Like, well, what do I want to get, you know? I want to get this, but if I don't go for that first, then he might do that. And then she might put this color here. And so, you know, it's one of those things where it's, I want to do all this stuff, but I'm probably not going to do all of it. So what's the most important? What should I do first? Um, it's the one thing that, um, that I like the least about Keyflower is it has this weird pickup and deliver mechanism. So in your own village, you do have to kind of move the goods around to do stuff with them. Sometimes the tiles can generate goods or whatever. Uh, I'm not, a big fan of that. So that's why that one year I, I selected Key to the City London, because it actually has like a route building thing instead of the pick up and deliver. Um, but Keyflower, like I said, is the 
popular game in this series. And I, I, I love it because it's crunchy and it's got all those different mechanisms going on at the same time. I don't know of another game that is an auction and worker placement at the same time going on. Um, so, John, we've played this game before, I think. Yes, uh, a few times. I haven't played it in quite some time, but it did leave an impression on me. And it's it's an interesting game surrounded it's like, it's like an interesting sandwich with daunting bread when you look at it for the first time and you're trying to get into it you're like this is there's a lot going on this is crazy and you got to figure out like the moving the goods around but then once you learn the game and you start playing you're like hey this isn't so bad and then suddenly after turn one it's right back to being daunting again because you're like oh there's so many things going on why did they put two out why are they doing that do i want to put three out there and there's just so many decisions to be made and it's it's one of my favorite types of game where the the mechanics themselves are fairly simple but you have to outthink and outplay the other opponents to do well at it so there is a lot of room strategically to be able to outplay everybody and and make a play that's just like that's really solid and even if it doesn't stop them from what they were doing it might make them have to pay more for it or it might make them have to rethink and it knocks them off of their axis so a very interesting game with a lot going on inside of it. Uh, it's, it's a real brain burner when it comes down to the end of it. You're just like, I don't, I don't even know what I did anymore. I hope I won. Uh, but it's a unique experience, and I, I would recommend that or Key to London. Uh, th that's also a great game. Tiles and everything. and They play differently, but they're both an interesting experience, and you can kind of see some of the design in one and the other. Yeah. You know, I'll say one thing that I'm not usually a fan of in games is hidden but trackable information. Mm -hmm. uh, and Keyflower has hidden but trackable information. You have a shield and you keep your workers and stuff behind yeah. it. But I will say, even though you could theoretically track what all workers somebody has, I'm glad that that information is hidden because I can't imagine somebody on their turn if they're actually trying to math out well, they've got five blue and they've got three blue and they've got two blue. You know, like I, if somebody wanted to try to memorize all that and then math it out, then that's fine. They can play key flower with somebody else other than me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would say normally I don't like hidden but trackable, but sometimes it just, it's there to prevent that crazy AP. And, I, and I'm glad this game has that. It's the only way to keep the game moving. So it was, it was a good decision. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, so that is, we're, we're in the top five now. That was number four of uh, Mr. X's top 25 games of all time. And as always, this is a contest. So sometime around the end of December, I'm going to draw. Uh, and how did you enter this contest? Well, you left comments on the YouTube videos that we're putting out. Uh, so in this one, uh, why don't you leave me a comment telling me what you think about Key Flower or Key to the City London, if you played those, or uh, if you have any thoughts about the Key series in general. You know, that's great. Or tell me some historical fact about the pilgrims. I don't know. That might be related to Keyflower, Mayflower. I don't know. Sure. Why not? <laughs> you know, if you don't have anything else to say, just, you know, that. That's fine. That's cool. Um, but otherwise, I'm Steven. That's John. We're from Just Got Played. And thanks for joining us. <laughs>